Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the conclusions and uh, another chill session where we can chit chat, haven't done a conclusion for quite some time and uh, of course uh, the main reason is because a lot of shit have happened over the past 24 hours, 48 hours and of course the biggest biggest news is the collapse of the fortress city of Voleda and um so uh, it's unimaginable that uh, Voleda has collapsed. I, it's still still a bit hard to believe <laughs> to process this that this fortress city has collapsed. It has been a long time that the Russians tried to attack Voleda and um, they kept failing. They kept kept failing and failing and failing, and uh, a lot of troops have died in the process due to poorly, you no know, improv uh, considered and planned operations, and. Now suddenly, you no, know, in a few short span of time, you can see that uh, this this was thirtieth of September. Suddenly, the Russians have uh, penetrated through, and then the next day they have captured the whole thing, and um, and this and if you scroll back the mapping, uh, you'll probably see that the the previous day yet was another big capture of the land around here, the big capture of land around here, like the collapse is sudden, very very sudden, uh, the information. So, so the information coming out, uh, there are some rumors saying that the Ukrainian troops that was uh, sent to Voleda was not, no, was totally never given the order to retreat. They, they, there was never, there was no reinforcement or no stuff like this that uh, allows them to continue to fight, and uh, they decided to you know redraw on their own accord, and and of course as a result due due to this, due to this kind of a non tactical redrawal. A lot of people has died. Of course, this is rumors uh, that I saw on Twitter, and uh, the official statement coming out from the Ukrainian army was that uh, um, the Russians attacked the flanks, so they have they have no more reserve to fight, so they have to withdraw. So they say the high command gave the permission to carry out withdrawal of the units from Voleda to preserve personnel and equipment. Clearly, this doesn't make a lot of sense because if you look at the progression of the the battle, you know, this last few days. Uh, the Russians basically came close. They surrounded Voleda and then they just bombarded. They just bombarded, 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 and so they. The, then after that, you no, know, the so for some uh, unknown time, the Ukrainians just redraw. And all this time, the the all these lines is actually you know under fire control of the Russians. So then, within the span of twenty four to forty eight. 36 hours, you no, know, suddenly the flex is raised all across Voleda. And uh with all this icon, as you can see, it's still pretty fresh, you no, know, around here on the first of October, and suddenly everything is captured by the Russian forces. Uh based on my experience covering this war, it looks for me, I don't think there is a there's an order for redrawal. Because the 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 window of redrawal should be much earlier. And um and I mean I have covered the analysis of the part of this area here as well in the I think previous conclusions. There is not much route uh, left you no know, for them to escape. And when your when your escape route is only the escape route is only one path, then I think the redrawal you no know, has be has to be ordered because you can't hold a position where you only have a uh, one route out. I think that is just a uh, common sense. So uh, otherwise, the Russian forces are already pushing towards Bohovi Flanka, and uh, in the latest reporting, there was no fight fighting report at Vodiane. Bohovi Flanka is the only location uh, being mentioned around here. It looks like fighting has progressed, and uh, and it is unclear where the Ukrainians is going to hold the next defense line at this moment. Uh, my gut feeling is that the Ukrainians is going to have hold the line around here. Around both of and along the road towards Novo Ukrainka, and probably some of these entrenchments. That's that's probably it. This is probably the line that they will be holding. The Russians are going to have a quick capture of everything around Voleda because I don't think any troops want to be anywhere close to Voleda, Voleda right now. Yeah, this is what I the feeling that I get. I think the Russians are going to make some quick push and. Uh, but this line here is also going to collapse very quickly if the Russians manage to break into Bohovia and Lenka uh, from the Vodiane direction. And if the fighting is fought in Bohovia and Lenka, um, this, this Ukrainian troops is going to have to redraw again. Uh, if not, then they, they're going to fall into some kind of ethical problems. So 
this is the current situation that is uh, we are that we are looking at Voleda, and like I said, it's unbelievable because once upon a time, front line is so far away. Yeah, and uh, two years ago, the Russians suffered heavy losses trying to take Voleda. So yeah, um, and then we have a lot of Russian claims of all these front line changes around here, and uh, particularly we have major ones like the Russians are getting very close to Katerinivka as they are now able to launch attack into Katerinivka directly uh, if this front line is correct. We also have the updates coming from the Velsky region from the Russian sources claiming that they have taken most of it right now. And you can see, I can't even see Nevelsky over here. Nevelsky is actually so far away. So the Nevelsky salient has uh, pretty much almost entirely closed right now. So this area here, according to the Russians, is now fully at fully under Russian control so uh, but this is not confirmed yet no this you can see how straight the line is this is very vague so we we have to wait for conf other information Hernik is now under threat of a uh, flanking operation from the rear as the rush as they would face two prone attack in the north and the northeast so Kirine is even worse they, they are going to face attack from a three at least three different directions uh, so Sukarine and uh, Sukarine and Khernik is now in deep trouble. Russians are really seemingly entering into a Zelene, uh, Zelene Druhi. So a lot of a uh, very critical situation uh, that is developing around the Khernik region. Uh, the situation up north is not much better. Uh, Selidove is also facing a, a bigger kind of a situation like Sukarine, where the attacks can now come from uh, multiple directions right now. So. Uh, it's like one, two, three, four, at least four different directions of even five if they go through the south. So uh, this is the, the Selidovic is going to be in deep battle as well. So we have multiple sectors, multiple sectors, Selidovic, Sukurine, Hernik, Zelene, Pershi, or Zelene, Druhi, all under no severe no threat of no uh, heavy battles. Uh, and this... I'm not sure if the Ukrainians have the resources right now to cope with this many major battles. Um, and yeah, we shall have to continue to wait and just let the story plays, plays itself and see whether the Ukrainians can actually hold the ground at all. Um, Pogrov, Pogrov front, uh, the Russians are now breaking through. It, it looks like Mikolaivka is close to full capture. I mean, there's only a little bit of Mikolaivka left. Russian forces have made advances. And once Mikolaivka fall, and the Russians take this entrenchment, full, take this fully entrenched, this full entrenchment, and of course this other entrenchment that is uh, north of the Hrodivka, the Russians will be able to launch the major offensive into Mindograd. Of course, the Russians is probably going to pincer up and take Mirolibivka uh, first, and then you know, and then build the front line around Balahan and. And so that it can actually launch yet another flanking operations, you know, from the east. So, uh, Minograd is going to be a massive, massive battle. Uh, the the city itself looks like a no lop sided bra. So, uh, this reminds me of um uh, one one town, is this Soleda, yeah, in in the Bakhmut front. So, yeah, it was so long ago I can't even remember the name. So, yeah, so this is going to develop. Pokrov itself not so fast yet. Uh, Pokrov main situation right now is uh, Lisivka, which the Russians are currently attacking towards. So, uh, taking of Lisivka will present a probably easier route, uh, because there's the seemingly a uh, easier route to reach Pokrov. But uh, whether the Russians would take such a huge risk, uh, extend over extending themselves into you know a snake like this, uh, it is unlikely. Uh, because this is a bit dangerous unless the Ukrainians prove to be really incompetent right now to fight back against the Russians. So, otherwise, uh, I think this is the major things that happened. There is also other weird stuff that is currently happening. Of course, we don't... Let's not bother talking about Thorax, you know, and this uh, massive uh, parallel universe, because I already mentioned it before, nothing very special about it, nor the Bakhmut one. Although the Bakhmut, uh, does, Bakhmut front does give me a feeling that there is some kind of major offensive has just begun. Fighting is reported at Markove, re reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Maiske. Uh, Krakorevka, I think also Ukrainian Defense Ministry, Chasivia, also Ukrainian Defense Ministry. And uh, Zaliniansky, 
Russian Defense Ministry. So uh, we have the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So these are only Zelensky is Russian Defense Ministry. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry mentioned massive attack in this direction. So um, we shall wait and see if this actually is some kind of a major oper operation. So I'm not even sure where's the front line, you no, know, because they talk about Markov and uh, Kharkovka and together. Maybe the front line now looks a bit like this, maybe. But we have to also note that the Russian Defense Ministry announced the capture of Kharkovka twice, on the 10th and on the 25th. And uh, we still do not have objective evidence to show the capture at this moment. But if let's say the Russians is true, is correct, maybe the Russians have the line something like this. Uh, something no, to the extent of this. Yeah, maybe the front line look a bit like this. And then the Russians are then attacking around in the region of Krakorevka towards Makove and then towards Maiske and in the area of Chasifia. So then this would make a bit more sense. So this is currently what we are looking at. Uh, but strategically, I'm not sure you know, what's the purpose over here. Like I said, uh, this is it's pretty pointless to punch through this area because there's way too much entrenchments and uh, we still have a massive uh, line of settlements like Konstantinivka and then, you no, know, do you really want to fight in Kramatorsk? Like, why would you want to fight in Kramatorsk? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like, you know, you will just destroy Kramatorsk. So I don't think it's necessary to you know, fight in these major cities. So yeah let's see and then we have the shocking information coming from the russian defense ministry in the announcement of the capture of the Okanyamsky. so now the 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 plot thickens so if let's say the russian lines look like this right now so they have captured the Okanyamsky, and then they also have captured uh, Iv ivana darivka and vimka so yeah so is the lines looking like this the i'm, I'm not sure or could they be closed up in this area here so the so we do not we have, there's literally no information coming out from this area to tell us what the hell is happening. The front line have massively changing. Uh, some I saw some Russian mapping basically just mapped it as per the Russian report, which is a bad idea because sometimes the Russian report can be wrong. So, and uh, so in my, in terms of my trusted mappings, uh, I haven't seen anyone address the problems you know that is facing in this area here this which doesn't make a lot of sense and yeah so and and because of this fighting reported near sievers there is a high chance that the front line may even look like this much bigger so so it would now look a bit like this this could be the front line right now and uh, uh yeah, it, it would be ridiculous because the front line difference would be massive. You know, talking about like four or five kilometers differences at the furthest extent, maybe seven kilometers. So I'm not sure what the hell is happening right here. Yeah, but it's something that I constantly try to you know, remind people that you no, know, this front line is not normal. You no, know, there's something wrong with this front line. So another situation is over in the in in this in the Vishneve as well russian defense ministry owns also announced the capture of Vishneve, and uh, similarly we don't we do not have the frontline updates around here to really reflect this change the latest uh in today's report uh which is this one what you're seeing now the mapping is from the yesterday one the first of uh the first of october the second of october report uh does shows fighting reported and according to the ukrainian defense ministry so there is some kind of so that if the rest fighting around Andreevka, then maybe the Russians are coming down from, uh, Zarine region and are taken the capture in this way. There's a possibility so that there is still fighting, uh, around the Andreevka region, so that might be the case. The the I I'm not sure. So the the this is yet another no problem that we are facing right now in the mapping. We we do not know where, and how the Vishnevi is captured. There's no information right now to to reflect this this situation. So, but if if let's say let's say, scroll down, if Vishnevi is true, if this is captured and this is the front line right now, this is the front line right now. Uh, then we might see you you can see that the tactical and strategic situation kind of changes quite a bit. Now the Russians can attack Lozova from multiple directions. I mean, Stemakivka not yet. They are pushing south as well. So it will be attacked from two sides and this will also become a massive pincer operation uh, which will entrap uh, Ukrainian forces all around 
the east of Lozova. That is also a possibility that we are looking at. So, so, um, so Vishnevi is a very pretty, pretty significant thing if if it is true. But the thing is, we do not know. We only have the Russian Defense Ministry's words for it. So, yeah, that's all we know. The Russians also seems to have uh, ramped up their operations around the Pischane region. Uh, we're fighting reporter at Kulyakivka, Kulitnivkivka, Kulyakivka, Novosinove, Novoset, Stepova Novoselivka. No, I'm not sure how they're going to reach Kurilivka, but you no, know, there is some kind of a like more operation, more actions, more more kinetic uh, power around this area here, and. The crossing at Senkove, Kurelakivka is the main target right here. And the objective of the Russians is to cut the road uh, between the Kupians region uh, in the north and in the south too as the Svetove Front region. So uh, so this is this is the Kupians Front and then uh, the, this is the Pishane Front. So the, the cutting of the roads around here would render the connection with the Svetove Front in the south uh, this right way, by the way, uh, to be totally broken, and then the logistic will have to go one big round. So that's the objective, to to extend Ukrainian uh, logistic, and the Ukrainians clearly knows you know this this kind of thing. I mean, they are not stupid, and uh, but but you can see the front line, you know, from the bridge is really close. It's only less than four kilometers, uh. So we shall see how this continue to develop, and uh. And of course, uh, the Russians also seem to be doing some kind of rush, uh, khaki offensive of sort. Lipsy, no study, uh, study, Voschiansk, uh, Taike, no, Vos, uh, Vochansky, Kotori region. These are the main, main areas. We even have a uh, fighting reporter at Brovaka previously in the day before. So a bit of a weird situation, but it feels like this is just a distraction. I feel like this is a diversion. I don't. I still don't believe the Russians are going to make serious push in the Kharkiv region. It just don't make strategic sense around here. And uh, then we have the Kursk front. The Kursk front is getting getting cursed for the Ukrainians again. Russian forces have uh, update uh, have seemingly you know make some progress around Bokovka according to Ukrainian mapping, and they have objectively confirmed to have made some progress in the. Lushkovo sector. As mentioned in the situation report, Russian forces have been geolocated and taken uh, the entire south, southeast and east of Vesoloe. Ukrainians are still making attacks around this area. There's a high chance, of course, uh, Obukovka is already under Ukrainian control, just that we, our mapping don't have the information for it. Uh, so Ukrainians are still in this area. The Russians are pushing uh, Noviput. And it looks, seems like this sudden you know, flanking attack from the east is having some progress. So uh, we shall see how this goes. There is still no updates whether the Ukrainians actually redrawn from Medveze. Uh, so we shall see you know, uh, how long can this Krukovo sector you know, go on. It's, it's, it's kind of weird because the previously we have the Ukrainians seemingly breaking out from this area. And it looks like they might actually you know, do it. You see, they might actually succeed. And you no know, attack into Grushkovo. But somehow now we have the geolocation of Russian forces around around this area, which means that the Russians have successfully pushed back the Ukrainian forces around this area here. So it's just a matter of we do not know how what is the extent of the Ukrainian front line right now, uh, after this Russian uh, no Russian uh, counter. So and uh, in this uh western flank of the Kurs front. Uh, the situation actually strategically there's no change uh, because we only have the Ukrainian mapping to acknowledge that the Russians have actually advanced around Obokovka based on Ukrainian mapping. Uh, so that is the change. But but if you look at Russian mapping, uh, there's no change. It's basically the same thing. So strategically, nothing has changed. But the Ukrainian offensive uh, in the north has uh, basically uh, dwindled. Uh, the latest report coming from uh, the... The latest report we have a uh, fighting reported, uh, I think in this in the Gokovka uh, Gokovka region. This is the latest latest report. There, so there is some some actions returning, uh, in the Gokovka. But the Russian seems to be on the counter. Fighting is reported at Novoselovka around here in this region here, and there is Russian claims that they have taken everything along this line. So they claim that this area here is now under Russian control, which is. Interesting because you no, know, we have we have always mapped it as the Russians claim all these areas. So, 
sometimes you know we do see this kind of weird reporting from the uh, from the russian side uh the russian sources uh, that they have claimed that the russians have taken all this place and then uh, weeks later oh the russians have taken this place but they have already previously taken this place so i'm not sure if it's actually anything but uh, the only new thing is indeed the fighting reporter at Novosilovka, which is around here otherwise yeah we don't have anything uh, about this and uh, in the southern flank we have the russian and ukrainian clashing at uh, Blackovo, and uh, we have the latest joe locations showing ukrainians uh in in all these various positions this confirmed uh dpa's front line to be accurate uh, at this moment which means that the front line indeed is looking something like this so just that how much more south to the border we do not know uh, this this one we do not know but uh looks like the rush our dpa mapping is more or less there very close to reality so let's see you know how this developed the curse front is really cursed uh it's really pointless uh by the look of it and uh yeah so that's the conclusions of the you know, all the big actions and the big major situations that is uh over in the ukraine war so anyway press the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next update